cases are better. They told me you're the guy. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. You can be your own guy. Well, they need that appraisal. Are you the guy that used to run the Remax deal? Or? I did. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I used to be the regional director. And uh, prior to that, I owned two Remax offices. Prior to that, I was a Remax agent. So, there you go. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I won't take it. You know what you're doing. Plan? Well, might be wrong, but So now I'm you just with. do this? Uh, yeah. I just do this. You just do this. Whatever this is, right? This? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, I, no I'm, I'm, a, I'm a consultant for brokerages, Remax brokerages all over everywhere. Yeah. So from here to... So are you ever home? Yeah. 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 I'm actually home more now than when I was regional director. When I was regional director, I used to leave on Monday and come back home on Friday. And now, I was just home the last two weeks. So it was time to get back on the road. Where was your home? Where's your home? Springfield, Missouri. Okay. I remember. I thought you said that. No, I'm normally out. When I leave, I'm out two days probably. I got to go to New Jersey in a couple of weeks. And uh, um, I'll be there. I'll fly out on Tuesday afternoon. I'll be back on Wednesday night. Do you notice any differences in the offices and their sales personnel from one, one area to the other? Yeah, there's no difference at all. No, no, and I and I got a I got a sense of it. Um, I got a, a little bit of a sense of it when I was when I was at the regional level. In that, um, I knew I knew the issues that I dealt with as a salesperson in Springfield, Missouri, as a broker in Springfield, Missouri, and I thought, well, I know what we deal with here, but I bet it's different, you know, when you look at the regional thing. And I found out that it wasn't. And, and then I thought, well, okay, when I start doing things in the U.S. and, you know, all over, it's, it's going to be different. And it wasn't. And I made a presentation at uh, the R4 convention in... Uh, first week of March, we made two different presentations, and what I discovered was, all over the world, it's not any different. Sales? Is, really? I had somebody tell all me sales is sales. From Australia and... to Holland to Paraguay to Ecuador to all these people that have reached out to me, it's not any different. And and that's, a, that's actually a great lead-in that wasn't supposed to be a lead-in to this. Because I, I believe, with all my core, that you can give me all the technology you want, we can go down all these different things, these, all these tools that we have, and at the end of the day, there's timeless principles that have not changed in this deal. And once we understand those, we can start making better decisions. And definitely once the clients understand these things, they make better decisions. And if you can be the ones that say, okay, for all the hoo-ha stuff we got, here's what's simmering behind the scenes. Here's how a real estate market works or doesn't work. Sellers go, oh, wow, is that what's going on? Oh, yeah, that's what's going on, right? So, so what, what I'm going to lay out for you today, these are the rules of the game, okay? And I'm a big game player. Like, <laughs> All you know, I'm a big Scrabble player is my favorite game. And and if you if you like Scrabble or if you ever played Scrabble, the old school Scrabble um, was a purple box and little wooden pieces and you opened up the box and when you turned the lid upside down on the inside of the lid of the box there were the rules of Scrabble. And, and you can know the rules of Scrabble and just suck at playing Scrabble, right? Because you have to know strategies within the rules. Once you know the strategies of Scrabble within the context of the rules of Scrabble, now you can be a great Scrabble player. Well, once you develop strategies for your clients and for yourself in the context of the rules of this game, all of a sudden you can become a great practitioner. And as you're a great practitioner and you do a great job for people, you get more referrals. And as you get more referrals, your business grows. And this is not something that we talk a lot about as an industry. We talk a lot about, you know, Zillow and, and Trulia and Facebook and LinkedIn and tweeting and all this stuff is all the hot crap right now. And yet this is the underlying principles of this business. So I'm going to kind of lay those out for you today if that's okay. All right. And I, think, I hope this will be helpful. So I'm a big quote guy, so I'm going to start with two quotes. One's from John Naisbitt. 
who says we're drowning in information but we're starved for knowledge. That it's never been more apropos than in this business right now. There is a tremendous amount of information out there for the public. Our role, your role, is to impart some knowledge on the information that they already have. That's really how this thing has changed for us as an industry. Used to, we were the information source. You couldn't get the information without us, right? Now you got all the information. Our job is to guide you through this thing, to give you some clarity. You got tons of options as a buyer. You have tons of options as a seller. Our role is to say, be willing to talk to you about all those and say, if this is an option for you, here's the pros and cons of that. Here's the pros and cons of doing this, that, and the other. Okay? And then the other one is from a lady named Carla O'Dell who said, if you don't give people information, they'll just make something up to fill the void. Right? They'll just make up their own theory. One of the things we've got to realize about the general public, even though we do this every day, multiple times a year we have transactions, most consumers do this, what, four or five times in their life? Right? Every eight to ten years? This game's massively different than it was ten years ago. It'll be massively different ten years forward, right? And so we always have to, to stay on top of the changes, always though acknowledging here's the real underlying things that are going on. So let's start. Principle number one is control. Someone is always in control of a real estate transaction. It's never a level playing field. Right? Tracy, what we talked about earlier, that was about control. Right? Somebody's always got the upper hand. I mean, this appraisal, 